Good morning, Great Alert Show from the WCAT-TV studio. I'm your host, Abby Williams. If you have not purchased the 2022 yearbook, extra copies were ordered and will be available for sale after books are distributed to all students who already purchased the yearbook. Yearbooks will be $105 and will be sold for cash only. No checks can be accepted at the end of the school year. Yearbooks will be sold on a first-come, first-served basis once distribution is completed. An announcement will be made when yearbooks can be purchased. The Environmental Club is collecting gently used binders and notebooks to be distributed next school year. If you have any binders or notebooks that are still in good shape and could be used by another student, please drop them off in the bin outside of Mr. Richter's classroom, S201. All students scheduled to take capstone next year should stop by Mrs. Logan's room, S110, or the main office to pick up the summer assignment. Please also review your email for details. We go to Kaylin Rocco for the three-day forecast. Good morning, Wildcats. For today's forecast, we will have a high of 89 and a low of 62 with sunny skies. Tomorrow, we will have a high of 88 and a low of 64 with sunny skies. Finally, on Thursday, we will have a high of 78 and a low of 60 with a 40% chance of thunderstorms. Reporting for the last time, I'm Kaylin Rocco. Thanks, Kaylin. Next year, the Cats Cafe would like to have a few juniors or seniors who are interested in education and restaurant management to help with our operations. This would need to be during a free set and you must be able to commit to coming consistently. If you are interested, please stop by H221 and see Mrs. Beckus. Any student who plans on taking AP U.S. History next year, you must stop in and see Mr. Pratt in H208 before the end of the year for your summer assignment. He is available during Wildcat time or the second half of Lunch and Learn. Any current or former interior design student who would like to take their housing styles project or their shoebox bedroom project are to see Mrs. Koss in F202 as soon as possible. Any items left after the last day of school may be thrown out. Wondering what's on the menu today? Here is Adina Pru with What's Cooking. What's Cooking Late Trope is Tuesday, May 31st, and cooking up in the main line, I have no clue. I've had the privilege of being a part of the broadcast and production crew for four years. I'm forever thankful for all the memories I've made and experiences I've gotten with this class. It's been fun being your host and carrying the legacy of the What's Cooking reports every day. I can't believe my time is up, but I'm so grateful for the experience. Reporting for WCATTV one last time, I'm Adina Pru. Thanks, Adina. The Pennsylvania State Police Bureau of Training and Education has announced expanded opportunities in law enforcement education to students between the ages of 15 and 18. Applications are now being accepted for the Hill Impact Program. The 14-week program will run at the PSP Southwest Training Center in Greensburg. The program is free of charge and introduces teens who are considering a career in law enforcement to many different elements of training and education, including physical fitness and paramilitary disciplines. Participants gain an understanding of what it takes to be a state trooper while learning about various elements of police work, such as the Pennsylvania Crimes Code, Vehicle Code, and Rules of Criminal, criminal Procedure. The program will begin in September. Participants meet once a week for two and a half hours in the evening and on four Saturdays to be determined for four hours. The deadline to register is June 30th, but interested teens should sign up quickly as class sizes are limited. To sign up for the program in Greensburg, contact Trooper Abby Blazovich at 717-614-7971. We now go to Luke Hamity for the sports report. What's up Wildcats? Today in Latrobe Sports, we recognize two athletes named Letterman's Club Athlete of the Week. Junior softball player Emma Blair went 4 for 4 at the plate, including a home run over a left center field fence. Her hitting and subsequent four RBIs were a big part of the team's 8 to 3 victory over Hemfield. She also contributed defensively, throwing out two runners at second place from her pit position at catcher. Junior tennis player August Lawrence ended the season as first player for the team. He also partnered with teammate Josh Havela to take third in the section doubles tournament. This placement earned them a, a berth in the WPIL doubles tournament. Congratulations, Emma and August. Reporting for the last time, this is Luke Hamity. Now here's Ben Hamity with an update on national sports. Thanks, Luke. Now here's your national sports report. 
In the MLB, the Pirates play their second of three games in their series against the Dodgers at 10.10 p.m. in Los Angeles. It's almost June, which means the NBA Finals will be starting this week. With the Warriors making it back to the big series, it will be interesting to see if Steph Curry can lead his team to victory to bring the chip back to the bay. Lastly, in the NHL, the Conference Finals start this week as play on the ice gets more and more intense as we approach the Cup. It's been an awesome year, as I cannot believe this is my last report. Now for the last time, that's all for sports. Back to you. Thanks, Ben. From classroom to classroom, the custodial staff try to make everything perfect for the student body. Here's reporter Taryn Yetzi with more. There are many gems in our school district, including our valuable custodian staff. Keeping our building clean and caring for the well-being of our students, the custodians are by far the backbone of our school community. The custodians have many jobs to do in our school. They take time and care to make sure every surface is clean and disaffected, especially in these pandemic times. Most would agree whether mopping floors or cleaning tables, they wouldn't be anywhere without the team aspect of their job. No doubt the, the colleagues that I have here are you know, a good, good, good group of people. You know, We get along real well, we work real well together. Um, also, um, with my wife being in the district for 13 years, uh, knowing other teachers, you know, and uh, being acquainted with them. The staff pride themselves on making sure the school is in top shape throughout the day, but nothing brings a smile to their face more than hearing the feedback from the student body. The president do. I mean, there's a lot of acknowledgments on their part saying, you know, well, thank you, thank you, thank you, which, which is very appreciated. You know, I mean, we, uh, I mean, we are here for for them in a sense, and uh, to make sure that. Uh, that they have a clean surface, a clean place, a clean place to sit, a clean place to work. Uh, we want to make that happen, you know, and that's, that's part of what, what our job is about. The custodians do find their job to be important, and there are many students, friends, and faculty members who agree with them. Not only is their job really about keeping our spaces clean, but I would say the other impact that they have in our community is the relationships that they build with students and staff here in this building, which I also think is crucial for um, you know, the vibe that we have going on here. Custodians do a fantastic job keeping our school clean, working not only during the day, but also at night to prepare the school for the following day. There truly is heart to what they do. Reporting for WCATTV, I'm Taryn Yutzi. Thanks, Taryn. Be sure to tell George or one of the evening custodians how much you appreciate their efforts to keep our school clean. We go to Harley Cochran with Wildcat World News. Good morning, Wildcats. In world news, amidst the national food crisis in Ukraine, Russia claims that it's the West's influence that is causing this issue. Ukraine forces say that due to the war, Kyiv has been unable to ship tons of grains and agricultural products to other parts of the country. But Moscow claims that the sanctions created by Western countries are to blame. And finally, on Thursday, Goodfellow star Ray Liotta passed away in his sleep at the age of 67 while in the Dominican Republic while for filming a show he was set to star in. Reporting for your Wildcat World News one last time for WCAT-TV, I'm Harley Cochran. Thanks for tuning in to the final episode of WCAT-TV News. Have a great summer, Elytra.